Morning once again from our morning update. Today is uh, Monday, 5th of August. As you all see, we started the day uh, in red. So, uh, Noor, I know that you've been expecting that or at least waiting for the, for, for those movements. For, Not any for, red day. For a, for a long time. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, we, yeah. we have a lot of movements in the market. I think we have a lot of things to discuss. 5% on NASDAQ, uh, 2.6% on S&P, 1% on Dow Jones, Russell, uh, Nikkei, 10%, uh, Euro stocks, 2%. Like, it's, everything is going down. Even... Mm -hmm. even Oil uh, bounced back as well, and we can see that uh, that the market hit hit back a, a major support. So we're back to the to the seventy two point six or seventy two point seven on WTI. Yeah. Um, gold as well, we did a big correction, especially with the disappointment that uh, that the market is having uh, with the geopolitical tension. Uh, nothing happened so far. So there's a lot of things to discuss. Let's start start with the stocks, uh, especially that if you take a look at the dollar index as well, we don't see a lot or a crazy move that, that happened over there. So um, yeah. how long is, is this going to stay? Or <clears throat> is this a short-term move that is exaggerated a little bit? Or or do you feel like uh, this is the this is the right move or the proper move happening? I mean, uh, here's the thing. Let's start from uh, what caused the move. Uh, basically, it, it did not start just today. It started also from last week. And uh, remember what we talked about uh, on Friday about the jobs report? Yeah. Uh, the jobs report came in uh, with a disappoint disappointing data uh, that includes, you know, higher unemployment rate, 4.3%. Markets were expecting or the, the average or the general consensus was like uh, uh, unemployment will stay at 4.1%. It did increase to 4.3%. We had an increase in the participation rate. Uh, jobs were less uh, less than expected. Wages was less than expected. So uh, what basically triggered this move is that uh, each day we get new data. And, so is the data uh, that bad in, in, in it, your opinion? It, it like, confirms we, at least. A lot of con like, but yeah, but we did see a lot of, of, of uh, a proper movement, a lot of corrections. Uh, things are not totally bad you know what i mean and unfortunately because it's not just only this thing it's multiple factors together from one side the data confirms that the federal reserve is actually late in raising rates that's number one on the other hand you still have the unwinding of the uh carry trade in uh in in the yen from the other side and the third is basically of course the geopolitical tensions uh because also you know iran this morning was saying uh anyone would uh, you know, intervene in whatever is happening, and the reason yeah. will be targeted too. So it is not; it's not just one side, but it's actually uh, mostly, I would say, is the U.S. data because this confirms, an, or the data confirmed, that the Fed is definitely uh, late, uh, and this is why now, even today, now a few minutes ago, uh, there are even uh, talks that the Federal Reserve might be um, uh, forced to cut in an emergency meeting. Oh, traders price in sixty percent chance for twenty-five basis point rate cut within one week. So that's even before before September's meeting. And I wouldn't be surprised if this happens, but the problem is now, if the Federal Reserve decided to come up with an emergency meeting to cut, it's going to show that they are actually panicking because we had the, the, Fed, the Fed's meeting was just about like a few days ago. Um, yeah. If they wait until September, it's going to be uh, even more late. And if they wait until September, they cut 50 basis point, it will also send the message that the Federal Reserve is also late. So that's that's the dilemma the Fed is. So whatever they do, it's going to still show that they're going to uh, they're basically panicking or not panicking that they basically are late or they made the policy error that they did not uh, they did not cut uh, uh, sooner. So this is why you're seeing bonds are still uh, rallying across the board. That's why yields are going down and you have the dollar is still lower, not uh, not not that much uh, lower, but at the same time, you know, safe havens uh, when it comes to the yen, you're seeing also the uh, the Swiss franc, uh, gold and silver are holding. On the other hand, you have crypto are uh, you know getting uh, getting hammered today? I mean, Bitcoin today Everything is down is by about thirteen percent. So uh, I wouldn't I would think uh, I wouldn't say that this is going to be like a short term move, but it's part of the correction uh, that is needed after you know the growth that we saw over the past few months. Well, the beauty is that uh, all the all the levels that we discussed on Friday, we uh, we hit them all. Oh yeah, that's <laughs> we, a good thing. We hit them all. Yeah, that's the good thing. Uh, 
Okay, so now that's that's the main reason for the reaction of the of the dollar index. We've see, we, we've seen the dollar index uh, dropping. Uh, now we're trading at one hundred two ninety seven. We did reach today the sixty seven. So uh, we we broke the the one hundred four and one hundred three and a half, and we we're still going down. Now we have another support at the levels of uh, uh, one hundred two sixty, which is where we bounce back from those levels, or one hundred three uh, one hundred two fifty. Yeah. But still, despite all this, um, we discussed the yen, and uh, and you mentioned that uh, uh, the the dollar was one of the factors that pushed the yen to continue going down. We did reach a one forty one sixty. Is this going to continue as a move, or should we see some kind of uh, uh, corrections between today and team and and tomorrow? Especially, I mean, that, corrections uh, is definitely possible. Yeah, uh, the only thing is a big move. Yeah, the problem is that you know the majority of the move that we're seeing now in in the end is basically because the the shift in the expectations towards the, the differential between the U.S. rates and the Japanese uh, and the Japanese rates. So now, I mean, you know, uh, just go back at least before the Federal Reserve meeting. Uh, you know, markets were expecting just twenty five basis point rate cut in September. Now we're talking about fifty in September, and fifty might be in November, and even even twenty five before. So that change of the differential between the the differential between the Fed and the Bank of Japan that's basically pushing uh, traders or investors to unwind their carry trade, and this means that they'll have to sell it and uh, to sell uh, uh, to or to close out these positions. And this is what's basically causing the yen to go up, but at the same time, dollar is going down, but slightly, not uh, not too much. But I think uh, this move would actually continue as long as that uh, uh, differential expectations keeps widening. Instead mm -hmm. of, uh, or sorry, keeps uh, keeps uh, yeah keeps keeps widening. Yeah, that's going to basically going to keep on. Yeah. Uh, uh, so that's why I think you know the one forty in the dollar yen is not that far away. Yeah, but Noor, I feel like there's a lot of exaggeration in the market at the moment, and uh, and it, it's like it's like when you see, okay, fine, we did break a trend up, mm -hmm. and uh, we've been waiting for this trend to be broken for a long time, and and. Uh, and the move is right. I'm not saying the move is wrong, but what I'm saying is the exaggeration and the and the expectation by by the interference of the Fed that's something crazy. We, we cannot see the Fed interfering six times from now to the end of the year. We have elections. oh, not six times. We, it's we definitely going to be three. Yeah, it's exactly. not six times. And yeah, but the percentages that you you just mentioned that that they will interfere in, in a much stronger and even in a in yeah. an emergency meeting and all these stuff. I think there's a lot of um, uh, exaggeration in that, uh, if I don't want to call it imagination. But uh, <laughs> but at the same time, I understand where where this come come from. Now mm -hmm. to protect ourselves, uh, that's that's the whole idea. That's why we do these uh, these meetings. So we have gold that we we mentioned that's still maintaining kind of the same level until Iran hits, and then we're gonna see how strong is the hit to see the reaction, and then gold should go back up if uh, yep. there's any drastic measures taken from that. Uh, now we're trading at 24.28. I think the range is still remaining the same for the past couple of days, uh, between 2400 and all the way to 2480. Uh, we're still trading within, within the same range. Oil, um, on the other hand, um, I know that uh, Aramco increased a little bit the prices of their contracts to Asia, and that basically uh, shows uh, that that they are uh, that they know that that the demand is going to increase, and they are confident. and uh, And eventually, we can see WTI trading at around seventy three. Uh, do you think these are good levels to buy from here? Like uh, it's it's a major support, and we've seen the market bounce back a lot from these levels. If we're talking about oil, WTI, yeah. The, uh, here's here's the thing about WTI too. I mean, uh, uh, last week, um, uh, despite all the uh, all the turmoil and everything, uh, uh, oil is basically ended up uh, lower, and we're breaking multiple levels. Now, there's the questions is. There's a lot of people saying, well, but there's a lot of tensions in the Middle East. Why oil is actually going down? Uh, it's because of OPEC meeting. It has nothing to do with OPEC meeting. What is happening in oil prices, no, basically? Is. Yeah, no, not not even that. It's because of the idea that the data it keeps on coming like uh, less than expected. It is showing more and more that the recession is ahead of us, and that's why the market is basically showing or pricing in less demand 
And this is why all is basically going down. Now, uh, is this going to continue? It is possible as long because today we have a lot of also a lot of data from Europe and a lot of data from the US. So it is it is more why uh, oil is going down is basically basically based on the uh, the fears that you know a recession might be is basically on the way. And this is why we're seeing this uh, this decline. Now, uh, if you're asking like if we can actually uh, buy here or something for a very short uh, you know hit and run as you like as you always mm -hmm. like it, that might be uh, that might be possible. Uh, at least um, uh, ahead of the ahead of the U.S. Uh, the U.S. session today, because today's uh, services PMI is going to be very important. Forget about the, the prices components, but you'll have to keep an eye on the new orders or the demand, and also the employment components. That's going to be uh, a major uh, a major thing to uh, to follow. Gold, keep an eye and be very 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 careful. Yes, we're in an uh, in in time that or in times it's, that gold is supposed to be. Uh, uh, you can basically, you know, buy gold, but at the same time, gold might actually get uh, get hit uh, due to some liquidations in uh, in some of the funds in the U.S., which basically they use their gold and liquidate it in order to raise cash, and that basically what happened uh, during uh, Friday's trading. So uh, make sure that you always have your stop in and uh, try not to, you know, trade away from uh, from the screen, uh, unless if you have your stop in. Um, uh, so yeah, I, th I think it is possible like just for a hit and run, uh, but the rest you'll have to wait and see. Perfect. Then we're going to wait and see and see what's going to happen uh, during this week. Uh, thank you guys for attending. We'll see you on uh, Friday. Next Monday. We're not going to close this week. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thanks. See you.